It is time to chit chat about something that happened yesterday that has never happened before. Although the World League had a couple teams in the particular country of Deutschland, the NFL had never traveled there and put on a real meaningful game in front of all the people that follow along with the NFL from that country and countries surrounding it. Obviously, there's a big military presence in Germany, and obviously that can be the excuse for why it is so popular there, but I don't believe it's just the military folk. I believe the country of Germany loves the game of American football. If you see Bjorn Werner, who has the football bromance show, former teammate of mine, biggest podcast in Germany about the NFL, he filled up a fucking arena on Friday night before the game, had an entire celebration of the league, and I don't think that was military folk. I believe that was a lot of Germans saying, Guten Tag, and Guten Morgen, Danke schön, go NFL, whatever they say, don't want to mock the thing. And that was awesome. They need to take more games to Germany. Germany needs to be the home of big games yep. continually going forward. Their fans showed up. They were excited about everything. They stayed long after the game ended. I assume they walked right down one of their cobblestone streets to Hofbrauhaus, House, which is down the road from where the Bayern München Stadium is. That was an amazing way to start the Sunday slate. I think Germany showed out. I think they showed up. I got to meet this guy whose name is Crow. Mm -hmm. He had a little football helmet. Helmet with a with a devil with a sweet he, Batman. He crushed it. Honestly, I was talking to my wife on FaceTime because I was still passed out in bed, laying in bed. She was on the other side of the house doing something. She needed to show me something on whether or not I wanted to keep it. And I'm FaceTiming with her, and this dude popped up on the screen. I go, whoa, whoa, need a camera, need a camera. So sorry. <laughs> need to take a picture of this. And she goes, of what? I go, I don't know how to describe. I, I honestly don't know how to describe what I'm talking about right now, Sam. But it's a guy wearing a helmet with a visor with some ears and the. His name's Crow, okay? You would never <laughs> understand German artists, but I appreciated Germany for being so fantastic yesterday. I'm thankful that the NFL went there. The rumor of, like, what, however many millions of people trying to get 70,000 tickets, and they showed up, showed out, and fucking amen, thank you. Uh, to the Germans for doing that. That was a cool environment yesterday, and obviously Tom Brady gets the win alongside the Buccaneers over the Seahawks. Yeah, it all, it all seemed to add up, like, for the perfect game, not only to, to be in Germany, but also to kick off the rest of the slate, like the rest of the day. But yeah, the fact that the fans are staying there late, they're singing. I mean, it just like it was just a super special environment. I loved. I know I texted you. I was pumped to see Tom Brady pumped to win a football game. Yeah. Like he's won so many games, and there's always the expectation you're going to win the Super Bowl every single year. He's had some adversity this year. I was like, man, it was cool to see. They get that when he realized, all right, the game is in hand, watching him dap up and give hugs and headbutt all of his teammates. I'm like, it's about time. Like, you should enjoy every win. Like, it's, it sucks that you have to go through a bunch, or I should say, at least on the field, and he has everything else going on to actually enjoy it. But, yeah, like that's why you play. It's fun. You want to win games with your teammates. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to enjoy. And Mac Brown told us whenever he was talking about his time at coaching Texas, he said the pressure got so great that when they won, it was a relief. And when they lost, it was devastating. That happens with players and coaches in the NFL as well. You win. Yeah, you're supposed to win. So let's yep. fucking go yeah, ahead. I still got a game next week, buddy. Don't worry. Don't get too excited. I'm, like, I'm not even off the field yet. Can I smile? Doesn't everybody say how hard it is to win? Hey, it's hard to win a game. And that's yeah. what, remember, everybody says it's hard to win a game. It's hard to win a game. Let's enjoy this a little bit. You're right. It looked like a sense of relief from Tom Brady. I think we saw that after last week's game where he said that was awesome. That was fucking awesome. Unprompted to begin the press conference, he said that. You thought maybe could that lead into the rest of the season for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC South? They're 500. They're leading the division, so it was nice to see them get a win. I have not given up on the Seattle Seahawks. I still think the Seattle Seahawks are a great team. I love what they're doing. I appreciate their story. I like Pete Carroll. love Geno Smith and the success he's having. I'm not giving up on the Seahawks. But that felt like a game, and I think we both picked the Bucs. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we did. That felt like a game with Tom Brady getting a chance to do something he's never done before, do something that nobody in the NFL has ever done before, win a game in Germany. That can not only wake up Tom, look at Julio. Yeah. Julio Jones mm -hmm. shows up. The entire team, and, you know, I, I know White talked about it two weeks ago where he had forgotten about how hard it is to make it into the NFL and how not everybody's in the NFL. When you go do something for the first time ever in your league's history and you get a chance to experience something that nobody else has really experienced, that can kind of put in perspective how big what you're doing is. That can kind of make you appreciate and respect what you got going on a little bit more, and I think that's why we both like the Buccaneers in this particular situation. But whenever you talk about Tom Brady – 
in this season, missing 11 days in training camp, unannounced to the world, I guess Bowles knew, missing a, a walkthrough on Saturday morning, going through everything he's going through publicly. His ex-wife now already has a new boyfriend. He's a jiu-jitsu teacher. That make you ask a lot of questions, and there ain't nothing Tom can do because old cuz can break all of his very pliable arms if he yeah. really wanted to. <laughs> it's just, I'm happy for Tom as well. I'm happy for the Bucks. I'm happy for Tom. I wish he would have got to go moss that guy whenever he slipped on the pass. Ooh. Like he said he was going to do. Interesting play call. Up 14-3 yeah. in the third oh. quarter. Could have been cool. Tom trips another person, kicks another person. <laughs> seemingly his move. He is a bit European, likes his soccer. But I am very – if he lands on Tom's leg right there, that's not good. Yeah. Uh, they were right. talking about how slick it was, the grass, which came immediately after a conversation about every stadium should be grass. I like to think about their thoughts on grass after Sunday yesterday in the Byron München <laughs> Stadium. But I enjoyed that game. Happy for Tom. And uh, they need to put a couple games in oh, Germany yeah. every year. Michael Dixon and Jake Camarda put on a – I completely forgot about this. I am so wow. sorry, Camarda. He hit a 64-yard fucking fair catch out of his own end zone right here. Okay, 14 nothing. end of the second quarter. He's in his own end zone, 64-yard fair catch. A lot of people said, guy shouldn't have fair caught it. Who cares? The returner put his head like this and was like, oh, I probably won't be able to return this. So he gets a fair catch. The ball has to be hit so high and so far to be fair caught. If you get a fair catch over 50 yards, it's great. If you get a 60-yard fair catch, people are like, this dude is a stud. A 64-yard fair catch is fucking demolished. He murders the ball. He has quickly climbed the ranks um, alongside A.J. Cole of Vegas mm -hmm. and Tommy Tanzan of the Chiefs of having, like, I think the best punting in the league right now, in the game right now, guys that can hit balls that nobody else can hit. Camarda started out bad. I think he was rushing. I think he was worried. I think he was trying to get it off too quick. He was in his own head. He has settled in here over, like, the last five weeks murders the football. That was awesome to see. Dixon put on a show. He was pinning them deep. I mean, it was, in my eyes, in my eyes, the best start to a Sunday slate in the history Ooh. of Sunday Hell slates. Yeah. And I think it's a lot to do with country roads yeah. take me home to the place I belong West Virginia Shout out to the Germans singing an absolute banger from John Denver. Uh, but the fans over there, and everybody talks about all the soccer fans, the hooligans, are like much better fans than in America. And I tend to believe that is correct, mostly because the sport that they cheer for doesn't have a lot of action, so they have to create their own action with chants and songs and energy and flares and fights and, you know, absolute insanity because the game of soccer is a little bit more slower paced. Now, soccer's our sport now. Sorry about it. About to go win the fucking yeah. soccer Lombardi. Oh, yeah. in the World Cup, but their fans have always been incredible. Soccer fans have always been notoriously amazing. And in England, I think we've experienced it, but in Germany, the way they want the entire game, the energy they had, the excitement they had, the noise, the vibe, it felt like it was a big fucking game. It felt like the environment was real, and I can't thank the, uh, hey, danke uh to the Deutschlanders uh, over there for sure in Germany. And in terms of more games being there, like that, that tweet came out that they that game already outperformed like every London game that they've ever, ever had in terms of like selling more merchandise and like league pass and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you can tell they absolutely love it. And in terms of like the fans, it seems like, and this it, it, just from watching it, like they're happy drunks over there. Like because like the beers they're getting are bigger and everything, but like that kind of fuels. The, they've been drinking since they're fourteen. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas, all of them. Whereas like you know what we always see on home games is like there's people who you know drink four tall boys of Bud Light and then just start getting into fights in the stands like over there they're hammering beers and instead they're like they're singing and it's kind of just like a more happy environment and Godwin said after the game and obviously he's not gonna shit on the experience but he was looking up into the crowd and he was just like this is unbelievable like it did feel much different than a London game he was like I'm just so grateful that I got to be a part of this experience because this is unlike anything I've ever done. And watching it, like, that really did translate. It really did feel much different than just, you know, uh, another fucking London game, you know, between two teams who kind of stink. Like, it did. It felt like a, a playoff game or like a, a heightened atmosphere, which I don't know if I was really expecting that. So we saw the NFL Network team go to the Hofbra House right. in, oh, yeah. in Munich in the square down there and have a great time. Steve Mariucci, at the end of the video, says, it's the greatest night of my life. 
he has. He's lost his voice. <laughs> Big time. He has this massive. Uh, I don't think it was a beer stein because the stein I think has the uh, the top thing on it. Massive mug of beer in the uh, later hosens or yeah. whatever. And he says, "This is the greatest night of my life." Yeah. Steve Mariucci has five kids. Five kids. He has five kids. So this is the greatest night yep. of my life. I think everybody that went over there enjoyed it. I'd been I've been to Germany a few times to play soccer. I'd also taken a trip over there. It is the nicest country. The, the, out of all the countries I've been to, the nicest country to Americans, I will say, that I've ever been okay. to. You drop me into a place, you can find out quickly how they feel about Americans. I am the biggest, the dumbest American that people will ever see. I obviously wear jorts and a tank top, and people look at me and go, oh, big dumb Yankee right there. So you can tell how countries feel about Americans as a whole just by dropping me into the middle of it. Now, I will say that's probably evolved a little bit. We're a little bit more popular in some of these countries that I visited to in the past, and I can't wait to get back to them. Germany, when I played soccer there. Germany, when I took a trip there. Germany, whenever we traveled through there and saw everything, the people were the nicest.